Lucas Stringer here. Here, Michael. I'm Say back uh, after my uh, disappearance from our prediction. Yes, and now instead of prediction, we're going to talk about the actual pay-per-view. Now, Michael, what did you think of this pay-per-view? It was good. It was a good pay-per-view. The singles and tag team competitions that weren't for the ladder matches were better than the ladder matches. No. That's my opinion, though, so the, no, the say no. no. Wait. No. Well, wait. We'll talk about matches one on one. First, we'll just talk about the kickoff. Seeing Daniel Bryan come back was exciting to see. Boner! Boner! Bo when, I, when I heard Bo Dallas' music, I was like, oh shit, this is going to be fucking awesome. I love Bo Dallas. You may not be able to climb the ladder, but you can climb the ladder of life! <laughs> <laughs> that chorus has started the whole boner chant. Boner, he's bo, like, leave. He's getting that. He's getting. He's gonna get boner for the rest of his career. I love it. It's awesome. And now we'll start with the opening match, which was surprisingly one of the best matches of the entire pay per view, and that was the Usos versus the. Wife. I like their new like theme and stuff. It's pretty cool. I don't like how they use. I don't like how they don't use Wyatt's theme anymore because that's like their trademark thing. Yeah, but I like their theme song. I liked their th their new theme song. I thought it was pretty good. But damn, awesome tag team! That, that is was, tag team that's, wrestling. That's tag team at its finest. In my opinion, the best two on two match of 2014. Quick, quick tag ins, tag outs, launches, dives, anything you want in a tag team match. And see, the thing is that surprises me is that Eric Groen and Luke Harper have enough gas to keep up with the Usos. Which, which is amazing because they are so big. They are big guys. They impressed me. Mostly mm -hmm. Eric Rowan because I know I know Luke Harper can do a bunch of awesome shit. Mm -hmm. Eric Rowan is impressing me every every week. Every he's week. Getting he's getting better. He's getting better. So overall, what grade would you give the Usos versus the Wyatt I'd give it a B plus. Out of ten. Uh, Be, oh, uh, I don't know, eight and a half, nine. I'm gonna give, yeah, I'm gonna give it a nine. Tag team at its best. Mm -hmm. Next up was the Divas title match, Paige versus Naomi. Which best was Divas match of the year? No, it wasn't. Which was? What was? Natalia versus Charlotte. Come on. And it's only and okay, the best. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That my was bad. Not, uh, my a bad. Divas match that wasn't on NXT. Best of the year. Yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. Best. The um pay per view divas match of the year, for sure. Good Whatever. divas match. They they both they were actually fighting. No, see the thing is they were actually fighting. But I I'm gonna like I'm gonna skip to the one out of ten rating. And I'm gonna give it a eight or a seven and a half. One fact: half of the match was them counter roll ups. That's all. That's like all it was. Other than that, it was Naomi diving everywhere. And but they that means they were trying to literally. I know get they were trying going. to impress the audience. But then again, people they impressed are, me. They impressed me too. But overall, the people at the pay per view were not into the match. Yeah, like they should be. But and also, this is leading to the pointless Cameron heel turn. <laughs> She's literally sitting outside of the ring like. She's like smiling. Dumb bitch. Like, I actually happening? think Paige might turn heel with Cameron. Yeah. Yeah. Because I like know. I don't know. Paige is like. I think Paige is to the kids. Here. Paige is a heel because she's fighting Cameron or whichever. Naomi. One. Naomi. My bad. Nah. I mean, the match ended in a fantastic way. Uh, that finisher. Mm-hmm. Right on the, the top DDT. of her head. See, the thing is, Naomi put her legs up. Mm -hmm. And there was a botch in the match. Which, it's it's fine. There wasn't a botch in the match in the Usos and Wyatt family, was there? There wasn't. No. But did I say that this was better than the Usos and the Wyatt family? No. No. Did I say it was better than a bunch of other matches on the pay-per-view? No. No. But overall... I was just telling you, Lucas. I know. I know. I will give this Divas match an 8 out of 10. Good Divas match. Best Divas match. In a it was the best year. Divas match because most Divas can't compete like Paige. And Naomi actually really impressed me in this. She, is she, very, she, she actually very performed impressive. as very athletic. She is very athletic. And I don't know. She's a promising Diva in the future. Same, yes. same as Paige. Paige is very young. So let's see these two at a main event again. Or just AJ and Oh, Paige yeah. About the uh, Usos and Wyatt family. Let's see a... Uh, a uh, Rematch at another pay per view at like Tornado Match Battleground Make or something it like happen. that. Yeah, exactly. Tornado Tag Team at its finest. That'd be an awesome match. Now, next up, the worst match of the night 
Adam Rose versus Paul Revere, or a.k.a. Damian Sandow. No, I, I, I literally, I get so mm. disgusted with the way they treat Damian Sandow. I could, I could You already even, know. I'm not going to review this part, Lucas. You can handle it. I couldn't even watch this. I, I literally was disgusted for the way they treated Damian Sandow. This is bullshit. He is such a good talent. You wasted him with the money in the bank. Jesus Christ, that still pisses me off. I'm sorry. But... Overall, this match was shit, and Adam Rose's finisher, your finisher is literally Dean Ambrose's finisher. Fuck off. Two, uh, what, four out of ten, only because Damian Sandow did some pretty impressive moments in the match, which, of course, it's Damian Sandow. We all knew it was going to happen. Because now, Damian Sandow is... Now, next up, like what I think was the best match of the night, in my opinion, was the Money in the Bank ladder match. Everyone was back and forth. And it was usually just Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins beating which we, each other up. Which is what we Kofi did. was so close. <laughs> you literally grabbed the, the little lock thing we that were keeps it on there. For a few seconds, we were convinced that Kofi Kingston was going to win this match. We were convinced. We were convinced. <laughs> Give Kofi a world title. Jesus Christ. He's been in the company for About longer. Six years. Yeah. But okay, now we'll just t we'll take all the competitors separately and go from best. When just say okay. how, what they thought they did. Okay. We'll start off with um, our Jack winner. Jack our winner. Oh, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins was so impressive in this match, and I'm really happy. And I predicted that he was. He going took to win a the beating money. though. He, took he a really beating. did took, take a beating. But but the ending Rollins, was kind of bad. We'll we'll talk about that later. Okay. We'll probably, after the okay. after everything. Okay. But overall, Seth Rollins, of course, impressed me. He's. And he's impressed me for like a long time. I'm a Seth Rollins supporter. I haven't I haven't known about Seth Rollins until it's the Shield debut. I've known about Seth Rollins for years. So you that's could have told me reason. about him, but I told you about him a few no, times. Didn't. Until the Shield debuted, I was like going ape shit. Like I was marking out when the Shield debuted, and he was. I was as just all like, hell. God damn it! Sorry, I was a Ryback fan. I, were, I was a Ryback fan too, but when I saw Seth Rollins on television, it was fuck pretty, off. Ryback. I mean, it was, a good, it was a good debut for them and. I'm glad Seth Rollins was the one to break them up. Yes. If it was Dean Ambrose, everyone would have been like, oh, that's too believable. If it was Roman Reigns, it'd be like, no, he's the face. He's the big face. But Seth Rollins... Awesome. And that, and another reason that now you know he's going to have a successful career. Yes, he is. Exactly. Because so. he won the money in the bank very early in his career. Very, very early in his career. It took, it took him a year to win the money in the bank. A year. And now let's uh, move on to uh, Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose, okay. I, I love Dean Ambrose. I freaking love him. Um, he, he was close. He was screwed. Yeah, he was very he was screwed, pretty much. So I feel like maybe um, I, if they don't have him versus... Um, if they don't have Ambrose versus Rollins at Battleground, I feel like he's going to face Kane. Yeah, because no. he's the one that... No, I can see that happening is because Kane was the one who screwed him at the end of the match. Also... The only reason why I won't be able to... I, we won't see Kane versus Dean Ambrose. First of all, we've seen it too many times. They fought in a pay-per-view before. So? It's True. WWE. They repeat True. everything. And, the Orton and Cena and, rivalry. And, and also, because I honestly think that Kane's going to face Cena for the title at Battleground. I don't want to see that, though. They suck together. I know. They have bad chemistry. They don't have good chemistry. But Cena doesn't have good chemistry with much people. Kane has the best chemistry with The Undertaker, in my opinion. Yes, he does. No, Shawn Michaels has the best chemistry with The Undertaker. Mm, no, I'm saying Kane has the best chemistry with The Undertaker. I didn't say The Undertaker had the best chemistry with Kane. Mm. Flip-flop him. Ah. But, um, we'll talk about... No, like, Kane wasn't the match. But he was another one. What the hell am I thinking? Uh, but overall, Dean Ambrose did great. And uh, he, he definitely was over in this match. The mm -hmm. crowd went nuts for mm -hmm. Ambrose. So mm -hmm. I know... Dean Ambrose also got a successful career. And another, reason, another good thing why the Shield broke up, they're going to have amazing single careers. They are. They started... That's a good thing. They started out as an alliance. Look at Evolution. Now they're huge. Now Batista won the world title. From? From Triple H. And now he's like a, what, a six-time, seven-time And Randy Orton beat one of the best Randy wrestlers Orton. in the world. Exactly. I'm sorry. 
I don't care what he did. He's still one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He beat Chris Benoit clean at a SummerSlam. Exactly. Like, that's incredible for Randy Orton to do. It is incredible. That's why I well, Let's now look Randy back Orton. at the past. Let's look at the present. Now, uh, oh. Next is uh, Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger's the worst. He was the worst, but he, he did a too lot. Bad. He the did a lot of impressive stuff. My on the favorite was when he did this huge power bomb on Rob Van Dam on top of the ladder. Mm -hmm. That was pretty. That cool. one, or when he did the swagger bomb on Kofi Kingston when Kofi Kingston had the ladder on. I mean, Jack Swagger is made to impress, but he wasn't the best. Yes. Good rhyme. Good rhyme. Next up, um, one of my favorites, Kofi. <laughs> Kofi, give him a whirl, fucking. I could imagine him with this. Literally. Same. I, oh my god, he's been in the mid car for six or seven years. And WWE, you keep him there because you're racist. There, exactly. Vince, you're a racist asshole. I'm sorry. I, um, it's just, I can only, think, just of, I can only think of one black man holding your WWE championship. Mark Henry. And that was Mark Henry. It's because it's also 17 years And it took there. him 15 fucking years to actually get a world championship. That's bull. Literally, Kofi is going to take another... Five or ten years. If he's even there for that he, long. Survivor Series 2009. Beat him he clean. Beat, he beat CM Punk and Randy Orton in under ten seconds. Clean. Clean. He rolled up CM Punk and then did the Trouble in Paradise to Randy Orton. Thank you, Randy Orton. You put him over. Like you always do. That's why we love you. That's why I respect you. And not Cena. Because how many, how many people has he put over in the past three years? Oh, yeah, two. It's depressing, really. Well, the Rock is The Rock, so that's understandable. And Next is... Uh, and Daniel Bryan. Okay. Which you probably Kofi have. Kingston did, of course, his ladder match move maneuvers. And the, one of my favorites was when... Um, I, I think it was Seth Rollins who pushed him off the ladder. They just jumped on, top, on the top rope, then jumped on everyone outside the ring. I'm like, Kofi. It's Kofi, of it course. It is Kofi. He's amazing. And um, Kofi was probably my second or third favorite mm -hmm. in this match. Um, Next is... Uh, I think it's... Who, who is Rob Van Dam. Is he the last? Nope, there's also Ziggler. Oh, yeah. There's Rollins, Ambrose, yep. Swagger, Kofi, Rob Van Dam. Because yep. Bad News Bear got taken out of the match because he got injured by mm. Swagger. Hmm? Now, imagine Bad News Bear turns face and feuds with Jack Swagger. Hey, Swagger, you thought Isn't I was going to be gone? is he Intercontinental Champion, though? I could see that happening. I could see. I'm afraid I got some good news. No, I'm afraid I've got some bad news, Swagger. No, no, no. If they're gonna turn him heel, they're gonna do the stupid gimmick of making it good news, Barrett. No, they're not. For no, the they're fucking not. Yes, they will. Good. Yes, they will. They won't. Look at what they've done in the. Look at Damian Sandow. And tell me. Fuck my life. No, but like they didn't turn Sandow face. He's still a dumbass heel. I know, but still. WWE gives people some retarded... Stardust. Pick that up. So stupid. So Dude, stupid. Pieces already fell out of that thing. I want more. Oh that. my god. Sorry, Lucas. Ah, no, sorry. Uh, but um, overall, Rob Van Dam, of course, is impressive. It's fucking Rob Van Dam in a ladder match. I don't think he was about to do the five-star frog splash off the ladder, but... Then Swagger. Swagger power. No, no, it was... um No, Rollins took him out. Oh, whatever. But, now finally... Hmm. Ziggler. <laughs> I love him so much, and I'm so... <laughs> Stop it! It literally upsets me! No! No! Time to play the game. Time to play the game of getting buried, bitch. Why? I love Ziggler so much. He is a fantastic performer, but in this ladder match, he didn't do much. He didn't do much, but when he did... The crowd went fucking ballistic, and he and it looked like he was WWE about to win. WWE doesn't listen to their entertainment, though. They don't. I and Triple H kind of like Triple H mentioned it on Raw when they announced that he was in the match too, which I was like, okay, maybe Ziggler could get pushed sooner or later. He better fucking soon. He better because you know they got he got a concussion and then Alberto Del Rio. And you think he's injury prone? He's not. He's ever after his concussion, he's never left. He's been keeping on wrestling, yep. even though he's pissed. Because he gets treated like shit but he by loves you guys. It. He loves wrestling, though. That's the thing. You That's the respect I have for Dolph Ziggler. He won't go to another career because he loves the fans. He loves everything. And he doesn't do it for the money either. Because he gets booed. And he stays there. Well, not no longer. He for the rest of He now gets cheered by fucking well, everybody. He gets cheered. My bad. My bad. He gets cheered. That's why. We keep him into the business. And if we start booing him, he's done. Yeah, I'd fucking hate so all of you. So keep Ziggler 
As he is. I started this on Twitter. Now. I put it on my Twitter, but then I deleted it. I don't All know right, why. Lucas. Hashtag push Ziggler. What would you rate um, the Money in the Bank ladder match, since you think it's your favorite match of the night? Best match of the night. Maybe next to the ladder match, but I'm going to give it a nine and a half. Nine and a half? Or nine. Do you all the, the, the mid-card people do better than the all Always. Every time. Last year's Money in the Bank match was better than... Last year's Money in the Bank match was awesome. Okay. In ways, was better than the All-Star. Uh, match. I guess, I don't know. I Eight, I guess. I don't know. It yeah. was just like, I just think all... I just, I'm sorry, but I think all Money in the Bank ladder matches are the same, unless it's TLC. I'm sorry. That's yeah. my opinion on it. If it's next, Money in the Bank, it's like the same. Next up, what was next? Uh, After Money in the Bank... It was Stardust and... Stardust, yeah, Stardust first ride back, so... Stardust and Goldust first ride back, so... <laughs> Decent tag team match. It was like five minutes. I saw it. That was the first time I saw Stardust, and oh, see, I was, died of laughter. He, he never watched his debut. It was hilarious. I, I was, just, what? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Why? Do you want? Do you want Cody to be more buried than he actually is? He's gonna go twelve feet under instead of six feet if you don't stop it. WWE. But then again, with every dumb shit character that Cody Rhodes is given, he fucking does awesome. Dashing at it. Cody Rhodes. That Disfigured just... Cody Rhodes. Stardust. Well, dashing was fucking ridiculous, but he made it work. The Disfigured was even, was sometimes even more stupid, but he made it work. It was cool, though, because they gave, like, plastic, I mean, paper, paper bags. bags. I loved it. it. That was cool. That but was uh, cool. It, was a, it was a decent tag team match. I really don't want to get into it. Overall, I'll give it probably a good six. Seven, because, you know, Ryback did the feed me more. Oh, and yeah, he was like, feed me more. I still got it. He started doing it, and then he said to the audience, I still got it. He it misses it. He misses it He so misses much. being a face, and it's hilarious. It, it's really funny. I want to just ride back so and turn face. I want Curtis Axel to get pushed, though. Curtis Axel is Mr. Perfect Son. He has the blood in his company. Imagine and Curtis still, Axel versus Daniel Bryan for a world title. That would be a fantastic beautiful. match because Curtis Axel is, is a, a great, full-on wrestler. He's a great wrestler. His dad was his protege until Mr. Perfect passed away. Rest in peace. But seriously, the guy has so much talent. I mean, he does get some mic work because he worked with Paul Heyman, but if he, if he starts his own heel career or his face career by himself, then we will see a major push in Curtis Axel. Okay. Uh, let's just not stay on this topic that much. Next up was one of the most surprisingly good matches. It was Rusev versus Biggie. It was awesome. I love it. Alexander Rusev. I don't give a fuck if, they, if his stage name is not Rusev. I'm calling him Alexander I Rusev. I liked it. This match is a really good match. It was so awesome. It went back and forth, back and forth, and then Rusev And Biggie was really impressive! Uh, yeah, yeah, he was. And, of Sorry, course, I Rusev. Kinda... And a lot of points, I really didn't think that Biggie was gonna win. Yeah, because of that spear. Damn. Rusev started bleeding in the mouth. Because he was... But, of course, Rusev he... is fucking Rusev. He's such a fucking beast. He did that accolade on him. and Oh, my God. I, I love Alexander Rusev. He He's literally the WWE version of Samoa Joe. Yes. Exactly. He does super kicks. He does drop kicks. He does insecurities. He does everything you need. Rusev versus Cena. Make it happen. I know. I want to see that so bad. Even, even, if, Cena wins. even if Rusev would lose. like That would be such a good match. Look at Cena and Cesaro. That's like one of the best matches of the year. So, uh, yeah. It was one of the best matches I've seen all year. The best Raw match of the mm -hmm. year, for sure. So now... I'll um, give this a... Uh, I'll give it a seven and a half. Seven and a half? I give it an eight. Uh, yeah, maybe eight. Just because of that big spear from Big E, like, and the fact that the beginning of the match, he went for the big spear, and Rusev, like, kneed him in the, like, the shoulder neck area, and, like, that stopped him. And then, like, Rusev delivered a kick over the ropes to, like, his head right here, like, Big E, like, and then he gets in the ring and super kicks him. Yep. Like, it's so impressive. But see, the thing is, people don't like Rusev is because of his character. His, his character, character is awesome. His character is awesome to me because it's, like, such a perfect heel because it's, like, Russia. Look at, uh, oh, what's his name? I I forgot his name. It wasn't Vladimir Kozlov. It was, it was somebody else from long ago that was Russian, and he, like, honored the USSR. But Rusev, like, he, he, like, honors Putin and, like, puts him on the Titan Tron and, like, shows him off, and it's so yeah. cool. But now, next up, I really don't want to get into it. It's basically, it was Layla versus Summer Rae. It was just basically them catfighting, then Fondango was a special guest referee. See, the thing is, I actually think, like, oh, at the end, when Summer Rae was crying because she lost, that wasn't the reason she was crying. 
If you look when Layla did her little dust off thing, she Layla, kicked her in the head. She Layla kicked her in the head. Like go back WWE universe and watch it. You will see Layla kick Summer Rae in the face, and that's why she's crying because she's like covering her mouth. Overall, right the through. match was just stupid. It's it was Steve. dumb. Fandango was awesome. Overall, four out of ten. Why well, push yeah. Fandango too? I could see him with this. I can see, see it. I, I, I want him to get Intercontinental He first. beat Chris Jericho at WrestleMania 29 for the biggest upset in history. At WrestleMania. At Clean. WrestleMania. Clean. He beat him, which is, like, amazing. Yeah. That usually doesn't happen. And now, let's get to the main event. No, wait, wait, wait. We can't say it yet. We gotta talk about the competitors first. Okay. Um. Now, first off... We'll start off with Bray Wyatt. Favorite superstar. Bray Wyatt was good. If Bray they, Wyatt if, was really good this match. If they bury him, I swear to God, WWE, I will come to your headquarters. And murder and, your And ass. murder Vince. And Triple H. Triple H has nothing to do with it. Because Triple H has is in control of the company yet. He's only COO and your chairman. So Vince... Put your balls where they're supposed to be and start pushing superstars that and not people just love. Fucking and not Cena. just John Cena. I'm not gonna get pissed right now, but seriously, it's just John Cena's getting old. I'm sorry. I'm I'm. And either way, young age or not, he's broken his fucking neck. That takes away five or six I years. Know. And see, the thing is, he keeps wrestling, and that's what I don't get. How he's so power like he just doesn't give up. I mean, that's why I respect John Cena so much is because he does so much for the company. But then again, I'm sick of seeing him in the main event. That's why or I love... with the champion. That's why I loved him at WrestleMania 30. Because he was in the mid-card. He was... Here's, here's WrestleMania 30. Here's John Cena. Here's Daniel Bryan. Here's John Cena. Like, you... I don't get it. He was not the main event, neither payback... Or Extreme Rules. He was not the main event. He never main evented one pay-per-view this year besides Elimination Chamber that was filled with five other guys. Right. It's it, You're doing good, WWE, and then you give him the championship. Just like, oh, let's make him tie with Ric Flair. If you like, fucking bake and pass Ric Flair, isn't, I will kill someone. Rick, it's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to get pissed. I'm sorry that that's, that's upsetting, though, because Ric Flair... It's Ric Flair. That means so much to him. Like, you can already tell, that's what's brought up every single time Ric Flair's name is brought up. He held the championship 16 times, and then you're going to give it to John Cena, too. Like, the, the, John Cena has nothing on Ric Flair. Nothing. John Cena does the five moves of doom, and then wins a championship. I get attitude adjusted by my brother, by my cousins. Does it hurt me? No, no. it doesn't. He literally just, this is, oh, just going to drop you. He, he ate, how he won the match, he AA'd, he came in, AA Kane, came in, AA Randy Orton, then just climbed. Like, that was the dumbest ending to a Money in the Bank match. It wasn't Money in the Bank, it was just a full online match. Next up, who I it really wanted to win this match, I really wanted Cesaro to win this fucking match. It's Cesaro, dude. He was impressive! He was, he so, was impressive. so impressive! And of course, Cena. see, the thing is, it's like, you can tell some of these superstars are going to get completely buried from this Money in the Bank match because Cena won. Mostly just Del Rio. Do have we cared now? Del Rio's done. Like, I wish, honestly, I think that's why he said he's just going to leave. I wish he wasn't, though. He's had an awesome career. A four-time world, ta four world champion. That is an The only career. person to say, I won the Royal Rumble when it was with 40 competitors yeah. instead of 30. Mm -hmm. Won the Money in the Bank. Cashed in at SummerSlam on CM Punk. Won the championship three other times after that. It was an impressive career. And walked out of WrestleMania 29 as world and see, heavyweight is, champion. And was in the last match of one of the greatest WWE superstars of all time's the, career. Edge. Edge. And see, the thing is with like Albert, I, he doesn't seem upset about it either. Like, his contract should be coming to an end soon. And see, I don't think he, he'd be that much upset about it because he has a very... He's had a very successful career. He paid his And dues. see, the thing is, he's foreign, too, which makes it even more believable that he doesn't care that he's leaving soon because he's foreign. That's that's an accomplishment to an aristocrat like Alberto Del Rio. 
Very. Well, let's just talk about Alberto Del Rio in the match. He was, Sim- he, it he was, was Alberto Del Rio in the match, you know? Kicking. Right. Like, that. that's Alberto Del Rio. Kick from Del Rio. Kick from Del Rio. Kick from Del Rio. That's what I like about him. He targets your... That's what I love about him, too. He's so aggressive. Oh, yeah, sure. We got two minutes to raw. Who cares? Whoa. I have a recorded. But anyway, now next we'll talk about who I thought, in my opinion. Maybe it was the second weakest in the match. And I feel bad. I love him. But at the same time, it's just like, get the fuck out of this match. Sheamus. Sheamus is the United States champion. That's that's all he needs right now. And see, the thing is, the United States championship doesn't even matter anymore. Dean Ambrose held it, and everyone was like, Oh, it's Dean Ambrose in the Shield. And he's the United States champion. Oh, okay. Who cares? The United States Championship was held by some of the greatest competitors ever. Especially Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit held the United States. That was his most prestigious championship, too. It wasn't even this or this. It was the United States Championship. That's That was one of the most prestigious titles ever, too. Cena held it. Big Show held it. And now you're just going to make it... Not, the United States Championship isn't even a mid-card championship anymore. I I put it with the Divas Championship. Bullshit. Because literally, superstars carry it around. They're just like, oh, I'm United States Champion. Like, she- when has Sheamus defended it? Payback. It. He won it. Well, he did win it after. Usually, usually in the United States or Intercontinental Champion are... I'm going to actually say it like... Uh, United States and Intercontinental Championship. Drew McIntyre. Rest in peace career. Mm. Uh, he was released and, you know. Well, we'll talk. Well, well, that'll be another time. That'll be another video. We can do that sometime soon. But, but another thing is, see, like, it's not even... Let's just focus on the money yeah. in the bank. Sheamus did okay. Just did a few breaks. It, and... it was his Sheamus. It was his Sheamus. Like, yes. Now, next, who else? Who are we talking Roman about? Roman Reigns. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. He was the, mo- the, awesome. was the leading competitor in the match. He's my favorite in the match. Even, though I, lo- even though I love Cesaro and Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns was my pick to win this match, too. I he should have fucking no, won. No, see, you told me this in a, in a message. Roman Reigns, very early. It's very early in his career. And see, he wasn't even in... He was in the independence circuit with... Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, but his name wasn't brought up that as much as Seth Rollins or Dean Ambrose. And when, so, when they Shield first debuted, I only went, "Holy shit, Dean Ambrose! Holy shit, Seth Rollins! Oh, who the fuck's that? that?" Like, it's way too early. In it's the very impressive though. Like, coming to this pay per view, he's the only one to be in the world title right, picture. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, now Seth Rollins kind of has since he won the Money mm-hmm. in the Bank. But see, another thing is. I don't like, WWE, how you do this. You advertise Roman Reigns. You make him go second to last. You you put the promo on, and you make him last in the promo, besides John Cena. Because, you know, all the kiddies love John Cena. You gotta make him last. <laughs> but, see, the thing is, it's like, you advertise somebody to win. And then they don't win. I don't like it. Now, anyway, we'll talk about Kane. It's like a, it's like a, fooled you all. Like, it's not funny. Yeah. You should just make a promo and make everything equal. But you but Roman don't, Reigns WWE. Was so fucking You awesome. don't. He was dominant. He literally, like, kicked ass. And that's what Roman Reigns does. And that's why people love him. Now, my least favorite. One of my Kane. least favorites is the last Kane. He's just so done for. It's like, it's I like mean, upsetting. I want him to... I want him to do the embrace the hate thing gimmick again. That was such a good gimmick. That was a really good gimmick. But then Dr. Shelby came in and ruined his career. But, you know... I like how Kane is still in the business, and I like how he's doing so much for the business still. After how many years? He's been in the business since the 90s. Yeah. Which is amazing. Around 16 years. Mm Mm-hmm. What do you give this? uh, We still haven't talked about fucking... uh, Randy Orton. Wow. Respect. He's one who I respected the most. 12 staples and a cut. Wow. He continued, and I love Randy Orton. Randy Orton deserves a lot more than he gets credit for. Mm-hmm. He, yes, he may have held too many world championships, but he he gives he deserves champion. them though. He gives he him gives, time. He gives time for it. When he won the WWE Championship at SummerSlam, he had kind of earned it. He had hadn't been champion in two mm-hmm. years since he lost it when he freaking got put over Mark Henry. Yeah, 
He put over Mark Henry. Put over Mark Henry. Wasn't champion for two years. Comes back, wins the WWE Championship. Loses at the next pay-per-view. That's like... I would be happy with that. Like, Randy Orton is so respectful because he gives other people opportunities. And not Cena. Cena's just like, oh, I We're not even going to talk about Cena because, of course, Cena fucking wins. I, I let's... Just, we can't, uh, I can't do this anymore. Fuck you, John Cena. That finishes it off. The match was good. 9 out of 10. Nine I don't give a 10, shit exactly. anymore. Let's, let's go watch. Overall, let's the go best match of the night was either this one or the one in the bank. Probably this one. Just because Cesaro, Bray Wyatt, and Roman Reigns. Done. To Bray Wyatt. Bray, I love him. I love, I love him, too. him so much. Now let's go see who the WWE champion, former WWE champion, who's coming tonight. It better be the Miz. Miz. <laughs> All right, WWE, we out. See ya.